Medical technology and advancements are getting more advanced by the day, and to keep up with all these kinds of changing systems, I believe that more and more hospitals over time will be turning to AI tools to help with all the added complexities that come with their technological advancements. And I think Palantir's approach as of late has been really interesting, as they're letting real people who've used Palantir's software give presentations about how it's changed their businesses. Because I know for a lot of people, there's this mysticism around Palantir and what exactly they do with their black box of software. And while admittedly, the back end of their software does seem pretty complex. In simple terms, all Palantir is doing for their clients is giving them access to data that they already own and pulling it all together into a single front end user face where businesses can then see all the connections and correlations within their data and use it to create better efficiencies. So in this video I'm about to show you, you'll see how Palantir's AI software called AIP is used for hospitals. So let's get right into the video. done, uh, whether it's like determining eligibility for hospital at home at Mount Sinai, or um, some of the work we're doing with, um, with Tampa General on sepsis, it, it really boils down to like understanding these pretty complex sets of rules uh, across the healthcare system, and then transforming those into a way that can be evaluated against the like unstructured and semi-structured patient data to say, okay, this patient meets this particular eligibility for um, hospital at home or concern for sepsis or K-Truda from a reimbursement perspective on the back end. And there's a real like heterogeneity problem in healthcare where you can't represent every possible combination of circumstances in one discrete field in the EMR. That's when uh, uh, large language models and AI become very useful where like a little bit of machine reasoning goes a long way to avoid the need to codify each individual node with, with, within the health system. And I think like uh, creating this like immense amount of like structure and like the network connecting the guideline to the particular part of the chart that's used to trigger the guideline is the thing that allows us to like operationalize these large language models and, and, and historically the medical record has had a monopoly at the point of care and it's like almost like um, like heresy to suggest any other software should be involved but I think as we move forward and as we like understand like how we can, you know, deploy AI into reimagining some of these workflows. I think, you know, could you at the same time have the clinical evaluation, which we showed in that like Keytruda example, right next to the billing example? And it's getting very specific about the work that needs to get done based on not just like the intuition of each, of each physician, but the actual empirical research that has been done uh, to understand how we should treat these patients. And closing the loop on the empirical research is tremendously difficult. Like uh, it, it, even for academic institutions that produce the research, like they can't operationalize to close the loop on the research. Comment on your last comment, which is this is why patients in trials do better because they actually get what they're supposed to get. And so this is one thing from a care delivery perspective would change outcomes across a broad spectrum of patients because we'd be applying or at least helping the clinician to apply properly the standards that have been built in trials. So it, it would be truly game changing to do something. The, the industry more broadly so that if you're getting care and you know, some, a rural area versus an urban area, or around like a Mayo Clinic versus not, um, that doesn't have to impact your, you know, your outcomes in the way that it does today. So how, you know, you have to start thinking about what is going to drive us as a society, because this is beyond the hospitals now, right? What's the society going to ask us to do to improve care? Uh, that's, what, do it, that, right? that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I think the ontology could definitely factor in the social determinants of health, right? When you start looking at the patient's H and P, and then that factors into their care. And that's what we love about how, about our work with Palantir. It's iterative. Whether that means guideline, new guidelines have to be fed in, or just things change in, the, in your system, and you're able to pivot, as we've seen in so much of our work we've done already. As we worked with them over time, the shift was to the expectation: you will, well, you're going to do this because we're saving lives. And now we're able to put those most common things that cause people to delay entering the pathway and we can start you know iterating on that and pulling that and now we're a consortium that can go back to the insurers and say well this is what results in the best outcome yeah. yeah i would love to see this as a way to take back some of that power because 
we're the ones that are boots on the ground to use today's theme, not the insurers. Um, and, are the- and and you brought up rural healthcare b- before yeah. earlier, and that's life changing. That would be amazing. Yeah. It would change the fabric of society.